Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at the Retina display on the new iPad. So I just got back from the Apple Store and got my new iPad, and the screen is fantastic. It's got a new Retina display. So let me take some time to tell you what a Retina display actually is and show you the difference. So the original iPad and the iPad 2 have a screen that's 768 pixels across and 1024 pixels vertically. Now the new iPad doubles that. It has 1536 across and 2048 vertically. So if we take a close up look at the screen and we put an imaginary grid on it that divides all the pixels on the screen. And we can see here what the pixels may look like in the corner of the screen of an original iPad or iPad 2. Now doubling that vertically and horizontally gets us four pixels for every one pixel that was previously there. So you can see here's an imaginary grid over the new iPad's retina display. So looking at some examples, for instance, let's look at something simple like text. So here's text on the grid of an original iPad or iPad 2. And you can see we're looking at it really closely now. And if you look at it from a normal distance, it looks like a letter. You don't really think about the pixels. But this is actually what it looks like if you look at it very closely. Now let's compare that to the new iPad. And you can see that the pixels are much finer, which means that the letters look a lot better. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal isn't that you notice the pixels or you don't. It's that your eye perceives it as being a finer line. So it looks a lot more like, say, reading printed words on paper than reading pixels on a computer screen. This means it will be easier for the eyes to read, easier for you to glance through, less strain on your eyes, and it will just have this much better look to it. Now let's look at images. Now if you're taking a look at an image on an original screen and you look at it really closely you can see the pixels like this. Now if we go to what it looks like on the new iPad you can see that since there's four pixels for every one on the previous versions uh, you can see that there's a lot more finer detail in the image. Now we're looking very closely here. You wouldn't no normally notice this. So that's a simulated image to show you the difference. But here is the actual image. Here's a picture I took with my 12 megapixel digital camera of the screen of the iPad 2. And you can see the pixels. I'm looking really closely in on this right here. Now I take the same camera, the same distance, the same zoom level of the photo, exactly the same photo on the new iPad with the Retina display and you can see that the pixels are much finer and harder to see. But what about icons? After all, a lot of times you're not viewing photos or reading some text. You're actually looking at the icons on the home screen or different buttons and different applications you're using. Well, if we take a look at some of the common icons here, you can see the difference between the original display and the new Retina display. And you can see that uh, they just look a lot finer, a lot sharper, a lot clearer on the new display. Now the good news is, is a lot of the improvements for the Retina display are automatic for applications. If an app hasn't been updated for the Retina display, it will still show text a lot sharper and may actually even show images sharper if the developer had originally included uh, nice images with the original. So a lot of your old apps are going to look better with the new iPad even if they're not updated. This is particularly true if you look at content in Safari. Text is going to look sharper even though the web developer or the website hasn't done anything to change it. It's just going to be rendered a lot nicer. And images may even look nicer. If a high resolution image has been shrunk down on a web page, which is pretty common, say if you're looking at a photo gallery or something, uh, looking at it uh, on the new retina display will actually show more detail in that image. Detail that you couldn't have seen before using a regular display on your older iPad or even on your computer. Now some developers have come out with, and more will be coming out with in the future, new versions of their apps for the iPad that will work on, still work on the old iPads but will actually display nicer images on the new iPads. So expect to find updates from some of your favorite apps coming soon that will look just stunning on the new iPad screen. One thing that's interesting to note is that the resolution is pretty close to paper. A lot of paper and magazines and such are printed at roughly 300 dots per inch and this screen is about 264 dots per inch. So the experience of reading, say, a magazine or what, looking at photos, reading text is going to be a lot closer to paper on this screen than on a typical computer screen or the older iPad. Also, viewing your photos is going to be a lot better 
typically you take photos at several megapixels like 3 megapixels, 5 megapixels, 8 megapixels depending upon your camera. But then you look at them on an iPad screen or in your computer screen in a resolution that's equivalent to 1 or 2 megapixels. Well now you're going to be looking at them at approximately 3 megapixels which means they're going to look a lot closer to actually holding a photograph in front of you. And the same is true for looking at high def video. Matter of fact it's going to be interesting filming video with the iPad 3. It's going to film it in 1080p. Your screen can actually display 1080p actually a little higher than it. So it's a case where you actually can see what you're shooting at the resolution. That's not true for even expensive handheld cameras. You're seeing it on a much smaller LCD and you only see the true high def when you view it later. So I hope you found this look at the new Retina display on the new iPad useful. Until next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.